So you finished watching Neon Genesis Evangelion on Netflix and you're a little confused. That's completely normal and expected given, well, the entire ending. But don't worry, we're here to help. Neon Genesis Evangelion essentially has two endings. There's the end of the TV series, episodes 25 and 26, which originally aired in early 1996. Then there's the film The End of Evangelion, which was released a year later in 1997. In between, there was a movie called Death and Rebirth. Basically, it's a recap movie. We're not going to delve too deep into that. All of these are now available on Netflix. Okay. So now you're probably asking yourself, wait, what's the ending? We'll explain, full spoilers ahead. After episode 24, Silei and Shinji's father, Gendo Akari, both set the project known as Human Instrumentality into motion, a process that will meld all human beings into a single shared consciousness, but both have different goals. Silei, kind of like a death cult, believes that humanity is not fit to live as it is and must undergo a unification and become a new being. Essentially, life is too hard. It's beyond fixing. So let's hit the reset button and start over. Gendo, however, is carrying out his late wife Yui's plan and is also pretty obsessed with getting the seer again. He wanted to use Ava Unit 01 as a sort of arc where everyone would experience the benefits of understanding one another and healing their own traumas, but also be able to resume individual shape afterward. In the TV show ending, episode 25 and 26, we see see Shinji undergoing the instrumentality process. The TV series is far less interested overall in the hows of the apocalypse than the emotional stakes that event represents for the cast. The movie ending, The End of Evangelion, has a more detailed depiction. In order to gain access to Unit 01, Sile sends a military strike force into Nerve headquarters and kills most of its personnel. A fatally wounded Masato tells Shinji that angels and the human race are all descendants of Lilith. Each angel is a different version of what humanity could have evolved into. This means, like the angels, humanity is also trying to reunite with Lilith in the basement in order to ascend into a new form. That's instrumentality. Masato begs Shinji to stop this from happening, but Ava-01 is unable to move. Asuka is gruesomely taken out by a series of artificial Avas powered using Kaoru's DNA, the same as Rei's dummy plug. Meanwhile, down in the basement, Rei absorbs the embryo of Adam, the creature created by the first ancestral race that Sile dug out of Antarctica, but rejects Gendo as the leader of the apocalypse. Instead, because she's a clone made of Yui's DNA and Lilith's, she's able to meld with Lilith and becomes a giant Rei. She seeks out Shinji, who manages to get into the awakened Ava-01. Terrified by the sight of Asuka's mangled Ava, his breakdown intensifies and he is powerless to stop the unification of the Ava, a symbol of humanity's knowledge, and Lilith, giant scary ray. Lilith ray appears to everyone in the form of their most beloved person. For Shinji, it's Kaoru. For Hayuga, it's Masato. For Maya, it's Ritsuko, and so on. The only exception is Gendo. While he sees a vision of Yui, she, alongside Kaoru and Rei, berate him for his abandonment and abuse of Shinji before Yui, whose soul still inhabits Ava Unit 01, and it bites off his head. Around the world, humanity melts together into a sea of LCL. That's the stuff pilots float in when they're piloting the Avas. That takes us roughly halfway through the movie, and theoretically to the point where episode 25 of the TV series begins. In the TV ending, Shinji is able to confront his self-loathing successfully, as are Asuka, Masato, and presumably the rest of humanity. However, you may have been caught off guard by how Shinji's journey is rendered in abstract with line animation and sometimes plain colored marker drawings. There are conflicting reports about why the extremely different animation styles were used, but it can be seen as a pragmatic storytelling device. As Shinji travels further and further into himself, stripping away his defenses, so so too do the visuals strip down through the steps of making an anime. Shinji peers into the hearts of those around him and realizes that they are also suffering, just as he is, and that it isn't right for him to rely on them to fix his issues. 
In a half dialogue, half lecture mimicking a therapy session, Shinji realizes that his own self-hatred has warped his relationships with others. Part of this journey involves traveling to a literal blank page, symbolizing complete and utter freedom of self-definition. But this is a lot to absorb, especially if you're a teen. So then we see this scene that looks like something from a slice of life anime. Shinji is a normal high school kid having fun, messing around with the gang. Its purpose in the moment is to snap Shinji out of a sense of being trapped, showing him what his life can be like. While perhaps a slight exaggeration, it illustrates for him that he can change his own perceptions, and thus himself. Having had this moment of breakthrough, the world metaphorically opens up to reveal all the potential healthy connections now open to him. Here, the show uses its last gasp to scale things back up to full animation, bringing color and movement into Shinji's world to accompany his newfound resolve. In End of Evangelion, however, Shinji rejects the concept of growth, and this ending is the dark yin to the anime series, more positive yang. As instrumentality begins, he sees warped versions of scenes with Masato and Asuka, then the TV ending helped him to understand his pain. Here it only intensifies his misogynistic disgust, as he is closed off from understanding their actions and sees their words only as attacks. We even see Gendo parroting the same words about fear of others in his dying moments, creating an ugly glimpse of the man this Shinji will likely become, bitter, abusive, and obsessed. He conjures a mental image of Asuka, who tells him harsh truths, that his attachment to her is impersonal, uninterested in her problems, and only a means to prop him up. Unable or unwilling to accept this, he strangles her, and because his mindset is the catalyst for instrumentality, it becomes one framed by human sorrow and fear rather than understanding and growth. When Shinji asks whether his existence is worthwhile, which was explored and affirmed in the TV series finale, he now receives no answer. Shinji is visited by the spirits of Rei and Kaoru, who represent hope and love within his heart, respectively. They attempt to deliver the message of the TV ending, and Shinji grasps the idea that he wants to reach out to others, but because he could not face himself, it's doomed to end in failure. He reflects that he'll likely realize the same thing over and over as he separates from the sea of humanity and wakes up on a beach with Asuka. After much emphasis on the fact that humans have hands to reach out and understand one another, the camera pointedly lingers on the pair's hands, close enough to touch and yet worlds apart. So while the TV series has an ambiguous and hopeful ending, some argue that the movie contradicts that. Despite saying that he wanted to try once again to connect with others, Shinji's first act on seeing Asuka is to try and strangle her, suggesting that he has learned nothing and changed nothing. But then, perhaps, the slightest glimmer of hope? He stops when Asuka reaches out to touch him. But even then, he cannot reciprocate. Instead, he returns to a state of paralysis, his depression and self-loathing consuming him. It is a bleak outcome. Now that we've discussed the two endings' meanings, you may be asking yourself, why are there two endings? As if they weren't both individually confusing enough, why were two created? Hideaki Anno reportedly struggles with depression, and while the series was under production, he was given a book on psychology. Anno told reporters that the psychological illness book shocked him, and quote, I finally found what I needed to say. The TV ending carries a sense of hopefulness, the possibility of recovery. But it was met with a legendary vehemence from fans. Anno and the studio received death threats over the TV finale, and many argue that the end of Evangelion was Anno's response to the fans' backlash to present a distinctly different ending about how retreating into fantasy causes the end of the world, prevents human understanding, and dooms Shinji to make the same mistakes over and over again rather than successfully grow. People relate to one ending over the other. Some find the original ending nonsensical and absurd. Others believe it's an enlightening masterpiece. The end of Evangelion can be disturbing and disgusting to some, while others think it shows that existence is arduous, but even the smallest moments of happiness make it worth fighting for. Maybe Hideaki Anno is the only one who will really know. Hell, maybe he doesn't even know either. Which ending do you like better? Tell us in the comments section. And do not forget to check out our other videos, the best anime of 2019 so far, and the best anime on Netflix. And as always, be sure to follow and subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch.